Tell me what you're up to. You have a, a, a book out. Let's talk about the book. Let's talk about the documentary. Yeah, my bandmate and I wrote a book called Beastie Boys Book. It's basically just the story of our band, and we've got a documentary movie that we made with Spike Jones, which is like a, we put on a live stage show when we sort of documented that, and it turned into a whole thing. And, you know, we've got, uh, got products in the marketplace. <laughs> yeah. Now, Kathleen, as we speak, you're gearing up for something very important in 2021, and that is a tour. It's basically the Kindy Kills big reunion. Yeah. I hope at the time this program plays, you'll be doing the tour. But what are your hopes for the tour? You know, I've been in this band for like 30 years or something. And I've never, we played in the 90s, we were very active. And then nothing. And then just in the past two years, we got back together. And part of it was because of the Kavanaugh hearings. And part of it was because of Me Too. And part of it... Um, was like a lot of those songs are much angrier than my later work or a lot of them were much more feminist 101 and so I just didn't feel like singing those songs and then all of a sudden I wanted to sing those songs watching the Kavanaugh hearings I was like singing my own lyrics to myself in my head I started singing the songs in the shower I started singing them in the car I started feeling the desire again and so when the idea floated for us to just play a show or just get together and do a song together. At first I was like, ah, I don't know, I don't know. And we got back together and it was like pretty awesome. And it's like your family, your best friend, your livelihood, your art, all in one. And so to be back with Toby and Kathy, my bandmates who I love so much and I learned so much from, more from our disagreements than our agreements, it's just been a, a dream come true, and I just really hope it happens, because we were, we just played like 10 sold out shows in LA, New York, and London, and we were getting ready to do everywhere, and, um, and then we got shut down two days before, and so I'm, I'm itching to get, to get back, but. Well, you know, I really appreciate you doing this. I know you don't do many interviews, and I'm aware that I'm talking to two trailblazing icons who have broken barriers in the music industry. But I'm interested in knowing, and first I'll ask you, Kathleen, and then you, Adam. That's who you are professionally. Personally, Kathleen, what makes you, you? Oh my God. No one's ever asked me that. That's so weird. I mean, I feel like I'm more who I am on stage than in real life. Like, I always want to be on stage. So everything that's not on stage feels a little bit like I'm not fully myself. So I guess I'm more me on stage than I am backstage, but you'd know what I'm like more. I have no idea. I mean, do you know what you're like? I don't know what I'm like. Like other people have to tell me besides that I'm an icon and trailblazer and all that. I mean, you know. Well, some days I think I know who I am and other days I have no idea. Yeah, I kind of, I mean, it's been COVID, you know. I, I'm a little clueless as to who I am right now. Well, Adam, as a person, what makes you, you? I, I grew up in Greenwich Village, New York in the 70s, and so I don't really have an opinion about everything. I dodge everything because that's how we grew up. Right. So I don't really know who I am or what I'm doing. I know that I love Kathleen. Uh, you know, I know that Pasadena's nice. I know that I'm happy. 